In the most recently completed quarter, Rivian's gross loss per vehicle delivered was over $39,000. That's right, they lost over $39,000 on gross profit for each vehicle they delivered in their most recent quarter. So, of course, understandably, management is taking aggressive steps to fix that, to remedy that. Here's precisely what they aim to do to achieve gross profit margin positive in the fourth quarter and beyond. I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. Visit fool.com slash parkev for the 10 best stocks to buy now. So one of the things they're improving on is the cost of materials, the bill of materials. And they expect that to enable a 20% material cost reduction when comparing an R1 dual motor with large pack produced in Q1 versus Q4. But this is only one type of model and 20% is not going to be enough to drive down the profit, uh, the cost of each vehicle to a level where it's gross profit margin positive. Another area they're improving is other costs, right? Not in the cost of goods sold, but operating expenses. Their gap operating expenses in the third quarter were 777 million, which is the lowest level they've had in three years. So that's good news that they're improving the efficiency in the cost. And you're already seeing that in some improvement in the cash flow from operations, negative 876 million in the latest quarter. It's still a really bad number, but at least you're seeing improvements in the negative of the number, right? So they're making it less negative and achieving progress towards break even, although slower than what you would like to see when the losses are this large. Looking ahead, they're reaffirming their annual delivery outlook of very low single digit growth compared to 2023 which reflects uh, deliveries of around 50, 51,000 units. And they expect to have a modest gross profit in the fourth quarter. And one of the ways they're going to, or some of the ways they're going to achieve this is in increase in non-vehicle revenues, such as regulatory credits, service, remarketing, software, and other services. So they're supplementing the vehicle sales revenue with these other non-vehicle revenues. And they're hoping that these offset the lower profit per vehicle and thereby drive the gross profit for the company overall even if they're still losing significant sums of money on each card they sell they're hoping that these other revenues which of course come with higher profit margins like the regulatory credits are almost pure profit right 100 percent profit on those software is also very high profit margin and other services those are probably higher profit margins and so the percentage of those as they increase in proportion to overall revenue they will help the company reach that gross profit margin positive in the fourth quarter another lever the company can pull is if they notice that uh, the progress in the quarter is not what they were hoping for or not what they were expecting in terms of gross profit they can uh, lower the availability of the less profitable models and produce only the more profitable models in their lineup, right? They have different variants of the models that they're selling, uh, higher priced models and lower priced models, and they can choose to produce more and sell more of the higher priced models that generate a better per vehicle margin compared to the others and thereby improve the profitability, even if that leads to a lower unit delivery number. So I think Rivian would rather hit this gross profit margin goal at lower deliveries than miss the gross profit goal and hit the goal of their delivery numbers. So I think the priority for Rivian here is the gross profit margin goal because the publicity and the investor concern about the company's losses on the bottom line are right now outweighing the company's unit delivery numbers that I think investors are uh, okay with the fact that, you know, demand for electric vehicles is not going to increase for the foreseeable future until we get significantly lower priced models. And so what investors want to focus on, what investors want management teams to focus on is to get their unit economics in line to bridge this gap between where we are now and 
you know, three years from now or five years from now, when the technology has improved and the cost of production has improved, battery technology has improved, and Rivian and other vehicle companies are able to produce models at lower price points and the infrastructure, the ecosystem of the electric vehicle industry, the charging stations, the repair stations, the servicing facilities, insurance costs, etc. All of that has matured a little bit more, thereby driving a little bit more interest from consumers. And so just bridge this gap between now and then. Sustain yourself. Don't lose so much money on the bottom line, right? Don't burn through nine, almost $900 million every quarter, right? Try to bring this down a little bit so that you, you know, Rivian has several billion dollars in its balance sheet, in its bank account to let that money last for a little while longer to bridge that gap. And hopefully on the other side of this bridge is an environment of lower priced models, a better EV ecosystem with higher unit sales that can sustain these businesses. They're also going to sell more of the electric delivery vans in the fourth quarter, which helps down drive down the variable cost per unit. Remember these electric delivery vans, which Rivian has contracted with Amazon for, which is the primary buyer of these. This is another area where Rivian is not making the advancements it had hoped. It ended the exclusivity relationship with Amazon. And so investors were hoping that would open up to more deals with other buyers. That hasn't really come to fruition just yet. But these are lower cost to produce models, right? They don't require all of the bells and whistles that a consumer vehicle would require. And so they're going to sell more of these and that's going to lower the loss per unit as the mix of the electric delivery vans takes a larger percentage of the overall vehicle sales. And they also expect to reduce their fixed costs per unit delivered in the fourth quarter. So Rivian management team is hoping that all of this will lead to the gross profit margin positive on them. And they anticipate that R2 will have a much faster path to profitability compared to R1. So that's what I was talking about. Just bridge this gap here between now and then and hope that the R2 models, the next generation models at the lower price points will deliver better profitability. Still, the lower than expected or the worse than expected results so far in 2024 has the company worsening the outlook for profitability. They're revising their guidance for the 2024 annual adjusted EBITDA to a loss between, or let's say $2.85 billion at the midpoint is how much they are forecasting to lose now on an adjusted EBITDA basis, which is worse than previously thought. So far, year-to-date, 2024 has gone worse than expected for Rivian. Hopefully, these adjustments made by management will lead to a better 2025. Hey, everyone. I'm excited to announce that my book is finally available for sale. I've been working on it for more than a year now, so I'm really excited to finally share this with you now. It goes through my framework for evaluating stocks. Some of you often ask why I like this stock or why I like the other stock. And this framework provides you the things that I look at when I'm evaluating stocks. I've added the link in the description below.